the closer we were to the lash, the more focused we were on collective liberation. That's not thinking forward to the 21st century. That's thinking backward to the 19th century. When Bob Church almost loses his life in the Memphis race riot of 1866, this kid is like, yo, I'm never going to be in this situation again. I mean, so how do we, like, like I said, the feeling your father had, the feeling my father had, the thing that we saw but did not experience, how can we tap better into that? What's so happening to it now? Through. This generation, I've said yeah. it before, these 20, 21, 20, 19, 18, they're going to be the ones because we got, we got comfortable. The 80s and 90s, we got comfortable because we weren't, you know, there were, there were killings, of course, but it wasn't, it wasn't. As, as prevalent, you know, it wasn't the 50s, 60s, it wasn't Selma, Pettus Bridge, it was, you know. Interesting. And, and, and many of our parents wanted to shield us from it. My father made me watch Iron the Prize. No question. You know, I'm sure you, you know, so, yeah. so a lot, the responsibility is to, you don't want to traumatize your children, I get it, we've moved on, I get it. Uh, this generation is probably least, you know, the, the 20 year olds don't care about race as much as the previous generations which is why you see a lot of white, there are a lot of white skateboarder kids out there protesting <laughs> in addition to the interlopers and the, no and the folks that have an agenda no because they, they don't see color the same way. No. And that's, that's hopeful. Yes. But, the, but the reality is it's your responsibility as a person who has children in your life to yes. expose them. It's the thing that our Jewish brothers and sisters understand. They say never forget. So they, they have, you, you have to go back. They make you, if you're in a Jewish faith, you have to know the Holocaust. You're yeah. going to go back. You're going to, you know, and, and they keep the history at the forefront. The bar mitzvah is the bar mitzvah. You keep your language alive, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to oh, learn your language. You got to learn your history. You got to learn whether it's borrowed or not. We can have that discussion. I'm in Ra, hello. You're going to learn it. And then you're going to be forced, even if you don't practice, because 90% of the people in Israel don't practice the faith. Right but they know every single ritual that goes into being Jewish. That's very powerful. So, so, so they have a whole country of people that don't follow the religion. Most of the people, and I'm not, this is a fact, so don't at me, don't call me anti-Semite or whatever. Right. Most of the people in Israel do not follow the religion who call themselves Jewish people, but they understand the power of, of who they are My God. and making sure that the next generation, the next generation, the next generation understand. You got to go through that. That, that act, rite of passage. Act, and they act on it. I mean, we, I didn't Not mention this. That's well, powerful. I, well, let me ask, is, is one of the six that he writes about in Black Fortune, uh, Richard Robert Wright, R.R. Wright? I don't know if he's- No, no, uh, I don't. That's... No, the reason I raise that is because to, the, to your point, um, uh, Bob Church Sr. started something called the Solvent Savings Bank for Black people in Memphis. By the time he died in 1912, it had about a million dollars of assets. Huh. It, they lose it during the Depression, of course. Of course. I mean, the Depression right. hits in the 20s. Except but for Mar Mary Lena Walker is the only one that had a bank that survived the Depression. She got to be on there, Walker. too. All right. Mary uh, Lena Walker. My goodness. And in fact, uh, I take this very, I mean, somebody, when we were talking about Ida Wee Wells being a G, yeah, we were using the 21st century, the hip-hop language, yeah. so maybe G is not the best thing. Yeah. What, whatever the highest praise is for a world builder in our, in our space, Ida Wee Wells, and, and shoulder to shoulder That's with her is Maggie Lena Walker. That's it. Yes, let's call them a C then. Let's call them C for the Candaces. The Candaces. Oh, nice. Yeah, for that Ethiopian on it. I'm going yeah, to change I'm going to change it. All right. Go ahead, Candace. <laughs> but, but the reason I raise it is because Richard Robert Wright was a little boy coming out of enslavement. He came okay. out of Cuthbert, Georgia. He started something called the Citizen Savings Bank. Still exists in Philadelphia. He was the president of Savannah State University. But anyway, not to go on that, on that tangent. When you talk about people in Israel, whether they are, they keep, the religious practice or not, using culture as the background and as the foundation for behavior, these brothers and sisters, in terms of Magdalene Walker, starting these banks and these institutions, in 2020 when we say, well, why would I go to a black bank when I get more services from, no, your culture is what animates your choice. You've got to see ourselves as a group. And so until they can get to the point where they can give you everything you could get at a Chase Manhattan or something else, you put your money there because your institution building, everything can't just be about the dollar. The dollar is animated by behavior. And that's- the, And you, trust. And trust. And, and culture. culture. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ah, yeah, I know. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> so, so, so the other thing that I, I wanted to say about Robert Church is, yeah. you know, as I was reading in, in Shamari Wills' book, 
he funded the the Oklahoma land because they so he funded he gave money yeah, he so it wasn't just Memphis and Bill Street no that Oklahoma expansion that turned into what we know now is Tulsa Greenwood Tulsa Oklahoma Black that's, Wall Street that's right because I was always starting a story and again we have to learn how to start the story from the beginning that's right our story didn't start with Egypt nope. Uh, so so when, when they go to Africa, they go to Egypt. Egypt Egypt is a byproduct of something else, right? Egypt is the end as the end of a long period of air experimentation yes. and expansion. That's right. So, so and our story doesn't start with slavery. Nope. You know, uh, at all. Slavery happened ten minutes ago yes. in our history. Yes. <laughs> no so, so so this is important, and I'm just learning this because I would I always talk about the Black Wall Street, the Black Wall Street, and I would oh, talk about yeah. you know I would talk about um uh J B J J B Stratford, and I would talk about of course O O W Gurley and yes. these guys with a vision. Yes. No, it was Robert Church's vision. Come on. A and fact, his I'm, dollars. I'm glad you raised that because it's very important to understand. Again, we're talking about West Tennessee, which really Mississippi. Understand, and it's like this is a quick story. In the 1860s, during the Civil War, when the Union Army went south, African people on those plantations, many of them were used to grow cotton, to do all this stuff, to fund the Union effort. They had to convince those black people to do that because black people started smashing the cotton gins. We ain't growing no cotton. So the lie they told them in places like Davis Bend, Mississippi, and in the CI in South Carolina was, if y'all farm this land, we'll give you the land. That was the 40 acres and the mule promise in South Carolina. They reneged on it and they let those former Confederates come back, take the land, that's kind of thing. And why they want to call important? us the N-word. Exactly. Yeah, but why is that important to the, the move west? Well, here's what happened. At the same, when they reneged on black, black people, that promise in the 1860s and 1870s and 80s, Reconstruction and after, they then opened up the West. Mind they, 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 they fighting against the, the people who live there. You say there. they opened up the West. You mean they murdered and massacred a bunch of uh, exactly. Native people. Exactly. They killed <laughs> set the colonialists. They fighting against them. But part of the reason that they're pushing against them, they're using us, meaning anybody east of the Mississippi, they say, we'll give y'all homestead land. So mm. they're trying to move people out there and move the Native Americans off their land in this genocide. Buffalo That's soldiers. What, Buffalo Soldiers, the 9th oh. Cavalry, 24th, 25th Infantry, that's exact. And the reason they call Buffalo Soldiers in part, not only are they fierce fighters in the Indian Wars, which we should not be proud of, some of those black people actually make friends with the Native Americans. You have Negroes going AWOL as well. You read Gerald Horn's book, Black and Brown, about how we treated people in Mexico and vice versa. It'll show you the roots of Cinco de Mayo have in part because black people was leaving and saying, okay, we're going back, we're going on patrol now, and them Negroes going to Mexico and never coming back. In other words, your enemy is not our enemy. But yes, the army is fighting, George Custer and, and all this kind of thing. Black people start moving west in part to get away from this racial terror. Ida Wells is really fought by the white people in Memphis, the white leaders in Memphis, because after they kill her friend and destroy the people's grocery, she puts in her paper, you know what? The law can't protect us, let's leave. And Robert Church and them is like, we will finance people going to Oklahoma, going to the territories. Mound Bayou in uh, Mississippi, Mound Bayou. And that's a whole nother story. They had a, oh. they had a hospital, they had all kinds of stuff. The guy who helped start Mount Bayou, his father had been enslaved on that plantation where they reneged on the promise for the cotton. And so we got y'all, we're gonna start an all black town. So when y'all go to the museum in, 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 in DC, the Smithsonian, the so-called Black Zonian, when you see those all black town signs, think of Robert Church, because it took somebody with some finance capital to state these cats. So by the time they end up in Tulsa, and when they, by the time they end up in places like Nicodemus, Kansas, you think about a guy named Pap Singleton, 1879. Benjamin Pap Singleton came out of Tennessee. You got, you can count the people, who, black people who can help finance those moves on one hand with some fingers left. And the first finger go up is Robert Church Sr. out of Memphis. Church understood. If you own it and control it, you can have prosperity for everybody. So yes, yes, you're right, Karen. You cannot tell the story of those West black towns or those black districts like Tulsa in the Greenwood area of uh, Tulsa in Oklahoma. You can't tell that story without Robert Church because they're financing that move West. That's absolutely right. <laughs>